what we're going over today is how to change an electrical holder and a ground clamp. And the reason that we're doing that is because I was about to do a cast iron repair and I pulled out the generator welder and the last time I used it I was using a quarter of an inch electrode and the ground clamp actually melted and I had to actually take the wires and clamp them directly to the part and the electrode holder also melted but I wedged a piece of stainless in there so I could finish the job and I never fixed it so I went to go uh, do this cast iron repair everything was destroyed so I uh, basically have to do it so I figured I'd do a video on it in case people didn't know how to do that on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 not being that big of a deal, 10 being a very big deal if you're in the welding field and you don't know how to change an electrode holder or a ground clamp it's right up there, it's a 10 it's very easy to do so um, if you don't know how to do it it's, it's not good because it is so easy to do and it happens all the time I kind of wrote down why change, so why do you have to change these, and it's very simple, you're dealing with a lot of heat, right, and actually that breaks down your equipment, so I wrote down a couple things, they burn up, right, if you freeze an electrode, and then you release the electrode holder, and it arcs in there, you're burning it up, slowly but surely, eventually, you're always going to have to change the electrode holder, ground clamps, not so much, uh, the generator welder, um, usually is the the, the one that burns up the ground clamps because I'm usually doing a huge amount of amperages um, but like when I burned up the the, um, the electrode holder the last time in the ground clamp the the electrode holder was so hot I could barely hold it and I was just trying to get done and I eventually I burned it up so burn it up right what causes the heat right here ohms or electrical resistance right as that electricity is flowing, if the connections aren't good or they're getting worn, it increases resistance, which increases heat, which causes them to burn up. And I got down here dirty, worn out. I kind of went over that already. I mean, you're out in the, with the generator welder, you're out in the field. So it's getting dirty, it's getting, it's getting drug on the ground, things like that. And you're constantly um, attaching them, unattaching them. They just get dirty and worn out. So that's why you would change it. So I'm going to go out in the lab, I'll show you uh, the destroyed ones that I have on there and then we will put the new ones on and I will show you how to do that. So let's go out in the lab and we'll uh, get this going. Alright, so here we are out in the lab. I'll show you what's left of the ground clamp. There it is. Nothing. I just vice gripped the wires to the part I was welding and kept going. So what we'll do is we'll start with the ground clamp. There's the electrode holder. You can see there's the piece of stainless that I jammed in there because that whole thing melted out. So I had to have the stainless in there to keep it from falling apart. So it's obviously not proper. So we are going to replace both with these two right here. I will show you how I grounded it when it broke just so you know how to do that if you're ever in a pinch you can do this so let me just show you how I grounded it once the ground actually melted so if you ever lose the actual ground clamp all you have to do to get it grounded is clamp the bare wires down to whatever you're welding is it ghetto yes does it work very well but eventually that's going to get really dirty so what we're going to do now is cut the dirty wires off remove the insulation and install a, uh, a lug on it because the ground clamp needs to have a lug so we'll start by chopping the old wires off and taking the um, insulation off. Step one, cut the old stuff out. She's a little dull. They got most of it. I'll trim the rest. Once you've taken off the dirty stuff, then you're going to remove the insulation, usually with a knife of some sort. Don't get too aggressive with it or you'll cut some of the strands. So now we've got some nice new, nice new copper showing. So now we're going to put this lug on. This is a compression one. I'm going to try and do it in a vise, see how that goes. And if that doesn't work, we will smash with hammer. All right, I forgot I was on a generator welder, which I don't have a vice near it. So I'm just going to go to plan B, make plan B, plan A, and smash it with a hammer. So plug your ears.
catches in there. All right, mistake number one has been made. This doesn't fit through the hole, so I should have ran it through first, then smashed it with a hammer so I can attach it right here. So instead, I'm already gonna destroy this ground clamp because I'm gonna go like this and just put a zip tie around it because I didn't do that. So I guess I'm already screwing this up, but yeah, so it's, it, don't make the mistake of not putting it through this hole, then putting this on because this isn't gonna fit. So now we're gonna just kind of put this on here. It'll work just fine for what we're doing here. So I took the nut off. So we're gonna put this on here. There's a washer, it's a copper washer. Put the nut on. And then I'll grab a wrench and we'll snug that down. Takes a 14 millimeter. And you want it nice and tight so there's no loose electrical co uh, connections in there. All right, that completes the installation of the ground clamp. We did not put it through this hole. That's the proper thing to do. I put a couple zip ties on there away from the heat. We'll see how long it lasts. But make sure you put it through this hole before you put the lug on if you want to do it the right way, I guess. So let's move on to the electrode holder. So I started here, pulled that piece of stainless that I shoved up in there into the melted part so that I could continue welding. And then if you look in there, I don't know if you can see it, but they're a Phillips head screw, two of them. So we're going to pull those out, pull this plastic piece off and see what happens from there. So what we're doing here now is trying to get this plastic off. And I thought oh, I could just rip it off because it was melted and I was correct. Normally you gotta take an Allen screw out. Now well, let's see if we can get these off. They're actually turning. A lot of times, because it takes so much heat, they're really hard to get off. I mean, you're almost better off just cutting it if you can't get it turned. Now that one's turning too, so we're in good shape. So this should drop right out. screws out. I didn't think we'd have to take both the screws right out, but apparently we do. Ooh. Oh. Plastic melted right off on it, so the copper is still pretty good, so I'm going to reuse it. If it's all corroded, you're going to want to cut it, just like we did with the ground clamp. Get the plastic off. Piece of stainless. So now we're back to where we were with the ground clamp. So now let's get ready to do the install. So I just took apart the new uh, electrode holder. That's what you're gonna need right there. On the right is a 732nd Allen wrench. At least that's what this one took. The one you have, the likelihood of it's gonna be the same is very slim to none. All right, so let's get started on the install. The biggest mistake people make when they're putting an electrode holder on they don't put this plastic piece on first. Just like I did with the ground clamp, it's the same thing. Put that on, let it slide down to the floor, forget about it. Then you take this, I haven't backed this out yet, and we're gonna put it into here and tighten it. So I'm gonna back this screw out. All right, 
right, so hopefully you now know how to put on a ground clamp and an electro roller. It's a very simple thing to do. That's why it's important to know how to do. You're going to look a little foolish if you don't know how to, which is basically set screws and some other screws, I guess. So uh, that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Well. And I guess the only thing left to do is make sure it works. Now we gotta fix that cast iron part, and we'll make a video of that too, so stay tuned.